position to fight. For two reasons. One, PDDs and two, siege tanks. And he's got to make sure that position is correct. Well, he is uh, trying to find out where they are. Had that watchtower for a moment. Sees a big oh. Beyong army headed his way. Does siege up and Beyong, of course, has to pull out because of that. Now, will Beyong just split up his army and try for a flank? Or will he go ahead and try a counterattack? I would like a counterattack, honestly. There's so little left. I mean, Flash is only mining on one base. The planetary's mined out right now, and Flash's army can really be only in one place at a time. The risk, of course, is that as soon as Flash even gets a whiff of that, he commits onto one of Byung's bases, which Byung will not be able to hold. Yeah, anywhere that Flash attacks, he should be able to kill, but... Byung should be able to attack uh, one or two places at that same time and probably kill them off as well. Nice little blue flame hellion run by here by Flash, who is doing some more economic damage to his opponent. Look at this. 113 workers killed versus 114 workers killed in this game thus far. Oh, Byung's going for it yet again. The Ravens are not quite there yet. He charges in and kills about four or five tanks, then gets out. Those are the moves Byung needs right now. He extends his army supply lead, but the Banshees are wreaking terrible vengeance here on the Marauders. Well, they are for now, and he's going to have to stim and get out of there, losing quite a few units. Doesn't want to lose those medevacs especially, but let's not forget that Sky Terran army that byung has been working on it's pretty much complete. He has four Ravens against Flash's three and 20 Vikings against just 15 of Flash. They will call this the Great Terran Economic Crash of 2014. Over 100,000 resources worth of units have been lost this game up to this point. Flash has lost a lot less, but of course he has been playing mech, so it is to be expected. Current army compositions, a huge... A huge sky force here for Byung that he's been building up in the background here. He's adding the Ravens in. He has Banshees of his own. He still has Medivacs to be able to ferry those 24 Marauders around. He has the army supply lead, although not by much. Because, of course, Byung, he's gone back up to 60. He had five SCVs. Remember this. He had <laughs> five. He has 60 yes. now. It's crazy, man. And Flash moving for it right now. Byung did just transfer a bunch of SCVs up to the north. This is a location that Byung really needs to hold if he wants to win this game. He can't go back to just the island. He needs to hold where his star ports are if he's going to win here. Yep, he knows he's going to have to sacrifice one of those bases at least. He could at least lift this one because it's only a tank working on it. But now he's going to fight. The PDDs are up and the air war begins on both sides. None of them wanting to commit to a seeker missile here. They both want to go full on with the air war. And that is an air war that Byung can certainly win. There are a lot of cloak banshees here. A scan goes down, which eliminates the cloak banshees of Byung. But Byung has the air superiority here. But banshees are heading in and they're trying to kill the economic line of Byung. Another scan goes down. Flash needs to move out of range, and he knows it. Does Byung have another scan? I don't think he does. No, right now he doesn't. He has to lift off, losing his SCVs once again. His starport's under attack. Byung still with a vastly superior air army, but that Thor and those siege tanks can do a lot of damage. Landing all his Vikings right now, going after this army of Flash, but the Widow Mine's coming up, and they have Focus recharged. fire! Beyond focuses fire on the Widow Mines. He kills the entire army with landed Vikings. He saves the starport base. Oh my god. And he's even going after these Banshees. Kills one of them off. Kills the second, second. one off. Beyond holds for now and is almost twice the supply of Flash. What? A game of madness between both players. Flash rebuilds his armory at the 57 minute mark and is building now pure Widow Mine because he doesn't have anything else he really can do. Byung's mined out the island. He's evacuating all his SCVs and medevacs along with the Marauders. He says, this island's done, folks. On to the next one. Let's find another base. But Flash is back. He's found the starports. He's engaging with the tanks. He kills one. He sets up Widow Mines to try and kill the Banshees. But Flash GG's! 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 Byung! Byung brings it back! Oh my god. That oh. game was so good. I can't even believe it. If I... that was the end of the day, this day was amazing. I That game had absolutely everything. That was easily by far the best TVT that we've seen in at least a year. No least. doubt. No doubt. I mean, I Axiom can't even think chat of a right TVT now, I've man. ever seen that I've liked more than that one. That had no. everything in it. Absolute madness. I, oh my god, that was absolutely mind-blowing. <laughs> Crank with his, Crank comments in Axiom staff chat is like, three set is good. 
Yes, Crank, <laughs> three set is good. That's mm. how I would sum up an hour of insanity from these guys. Dude, I had no idea how that was going to end. Just oh crazy. An amazing God. comeback, an amazing play by both sides. Uh, fantastic game. Probably going to be the game of the tournament right there, but you know what? I think I've said that twice already, so we'll see going forward, man. It just, just beautiful. I'm going to ask the players if they need a break, because I think they probably do. We obviously do, but I want to ask the players how long they're going to need... And it's then it's oh, fair. That game yeah. has to tire you out. No question. Um, Just wow. Just wow. Oh, Guys, get oh. out. Spread the word about the Shoutcraft uh, Invitational from SanDisk. An amazing sponsor to be able to help us put this on and uh, give some amazing games. A best of seven with Flash in it is not disappointing. No. No, it's not. This it, We're three games in to a best of seven, and it's already the series of the tournament. And we've still yeah. got maybe more, four more maps in it. <laughs> oh, it's a possibility. Like, you can't just say someone's going to close it out from here. Okay, Bjorn asks for three minutes. We'll give him five. I think that's entirely fair. Let them go and get a drink and collect their thoughts. Because mm -hmm. this is the series of a lifetime. We're coming back after the break, folks. For game four of this best of seven, please do go on Twitter, talk about this tournament. There is a hashtag we're using called Sandisk. If you click that hashtag, you'll see what everyone else is saying about this tournament. Get in on that conversation. And of course, please do thank Sandisk for giving us this. They've given us a once in a lifetime series. That's at Sandisk. The social media guys I know watch this tournament. They've been replying to everybody who's been sending their thanks. And of course, this is their first time investing in esports and i really hope we're giving them a great first impression oh wow what a series we're going to be back after the break folks my name is total biscuit and i'm artosis see you in five for yet more insanity Hi, my name's John Bain, and it's my pleasure to thank Sandisk for bringing us top-notch StarCraft 2 entertainment at the Sandisk Shoutcraft Invitational. When I'm not casting StarCraft 2, it's my job to critique PC games, and to do that, I need the best hardware. One of the best upgrades that you can get for your PC gaming experience is a solid-state drive, so I'd like to encourage you to check out the Sandisk Extreme Pro SSD. It's engineered for super-fast read and write speeds and consistent high performance 24-7. What does that mean for your games? Faster load times, faster boot times, faster install times. Less downtime, more game time. Plus, they're easy to install, run cool, and are both virtually silent and energy efficient. If you're worried about reliability, no need. Sandisk backs it all up with a 10-year warranty. Game without limits when you step up to the consistent high performance of Sandisk Extreme Pro.
Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. There is still so much to show you. Such wonders you're about to experience here. Oh my god. I am like still kind of reeling. I had to get up and walk around a little bit after that TVT, yeah. man. It was so sick. It was... I literally cannot remember a TVT that was better than that. No. Absolute no. madness. It's two to one, flash in the lead. This is an amazing best of seven right now. It really, really is. So amazing, in fact, that the boss himself, Mike Morhaime, is watching and tweeting about how crazy that series mm. was. Oh, man. He, he is... I've got to admit, like, I've met him several times. He is one of the most passionate individuals I've ever had the pleasure to sit down and talk with. Oh, yeah. And in that kind of position, I guess it's got to be a little bit difficult to be so supportive of a game that is is kind of niche. You know, it's an incredibly hardcore game in a genre that doesn't really have that many games in it right now. And yet, mm -hmm. his support for StarCraft 2 is completely and totally unwavering. And that is really heartening to see. Uh, he, well, it is a passion for him. He's he's a smart guy, and he knows what's good. Uh, you know, yeah. if anyone tells you StarCraft isn't the best eSport, direct him to that last game. You just, you can't get better entertainment than what we're seeing here today. No, no. no there, are, there are certainly team-based eSports out there, but when it comes down to a one-on-one, -on -one, a single combat, a duel to the death, StarCraft 2 is it right there. It is the game that just brings mm -hmm. out some of the most incredible experiences. And hopefully we're going to have many more of those because this is map four of a best of seven series between this guy right here who may be my new favorite guy after that <laughs> game to the south position here on merry-go-round in the orange trunks playing Terran, CJ Entis Biang. And his opponent in the top left of our map putting on some amazing mech play in all of these games, is KT Rolster Flash. And he is playing so very, very well. And he's going command center first, as it turns out wow. here on Merry-Go-Round. All right, I'm a little bit surprised to see this. I, Before going in this, I was thinking to myself, what are these guys gonna do? Uh, and I, I came up in my head with aggression. I was like, you know what? I think this is a good map to turn on some aggression, but Flash saying, nope, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and play that macro game. And that's an interesting thing to do, considering his opponent did go gas first. So I am intrigued to see how this works out. Well, um, you know, I generally like gas first against command center first builds. Mm. Uh, I feel like it's really hard for the command center first guy to actually block against every possible little attack. You know, there could be like... A, a medevac drop with some marines coming. There could be hellions coming. Uh, there could be a banshee coming in, and it's it's hard to say what you're fighting against. And yeah. you're just gonna all your tech is a bit slower. All your units are a little bit less. It's a tough one, but you know this is what Flash made his career off of: is going for fast expansions, and being able to hold anything. Oh, we've seen that in this series already. You know, you shouldn't be able to hold that two racks reaper play unscouted with the single reaper into the reactor. But he did, and he didn't just hold, held mm -hmm. it, he crushed it. He crushed it, and it was incredible to watch. But this is going to be a step up in difficulty from that. Yeah, it means he gets two orbitals out very quickly, but he knows that there's a lot of things that could come off the back of this, and there's a, a nasty little combination of units that you can bring out of these three production facilities. Like, is it going to be a medevac with a drop? Is it going to be a Banshee, which it looks like it very well might be here? Yeah, it's looking like it's probably going to be that same build that we saw last game uh, as an opening for Byung, somehow deciding that he can do a better job of it this time. Uh, but with that bunker up, could be a little bit harder. Now, he does have a Reaper with it, which yeah. means the Marines are going to have to split up a little bit. And he's he's really taxing the multitasking here of Flash. Well, Flash's multitasking is god tier, so uh, you know that's a, certainly a, a challenging thing to try and do. But Beyond's control is great as well, and incredibly fast. The Hellion slips by the bunker, having taken some damage. The Reaper is dead, however. However, we do have wow, it's a Hellion versus a Marine, which is slight, gonna just go in favor of that Hellion. But there is a second Marine to back that up. So so far, the aggression hasn't done too much economic damage. It's picked off a worker. And oh, those workers want revenge for their fallen comrade there. They almost lined up, which is not what you want to do. 
Well, this uh, Hellion actually deals a lot of damage in here. He's He got three kills and put quite a bit of damage on all these SCVs, so that's actually something that can really play a factor later on when the Banshee flies in and starts trying to kill some of them that are hurt a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't take too long for that Banshee to get over in this position. Not in fact, like any position on Merry Go Round is quite short for a Banshee. But we do see the Engineering Bay coming down for Flash, and there's going to be a Missile Turret. This this map for Banshees, even though the air distance is small, the space at the back of the natural is maybe the least I've seen on any map, actually. It's really mm. pretty bad. Yeah, you know, those walls, you just can't get past them. So <laughs> it's not like you can go fly behind and hide. Uh, it's, it's a pretty narrow area to get in, but let's see what he can get done. He does bring the Banshee into the natural and kills one SCV, but takes a turret shot as well. Mm-hmm. You do at least have that south position with this unpassable terrain here. You can't, you've got a bit of an escape route out of there, but it, you can't really commit. Because uh, what you're going to do, you're going to fly into the main and probably get shot down, right? So you're going to pick mm -hmm. maybe at the south there. And Flash knows that as well. So he will be able to keep an eye on that. And so far, it's just a little bit of damage here and there. The cloak has been activated, but Flash was on top of that already. And then gets the scan, which I mean, what, it's going to need one more shot. And he ah! Yeah! <laughs> Maybe it was two more shots. Oh, he scans again. He wants rid of that. Good lord. In the meantime, an engagement that is not going in Flash's favor at all, as Beyond is able to drive away those Hellions. But, so far, not crippling economic losses. Not at all. Only two workers killed by Beyond. Two scans wasted, of course. No, oh, certainly. This is uh, this is going completely fine for Flash. If you look at that CV count, 29 to 35. Beyond yep. just finishing up his command center. The orbital not yet done at his natural, so... I would say that Flash is pretty happy with where he's at. Yeah, he's uh, definitely Biondo, doing... Yeah, he's, he's going for a Blue Flame Hellion, Total Biscuit. Hmm. Well, if you at first you don't succeed when it comes to harassing mineral lines, then load up the big daddy of mineral line harassment, that being the Blue Flame, the Infernal Pre-Igniter upgrade. It can certainly do the job there. And... It, Flash's builds, he seems to be right now playing Marine Tank Banshee. Of course, Blue Flame Hellion can shut that down pretty hard, but again, it all comes down to positioning. Yeah, you know, I wonder if he's actually going to walk across the map and do an attack. It looks like he will be staying on Biotank this time, but just overall, when I see someone who went for a fast expansion, focus on Starport Factory and one racks making units, I always think about safety. Because it's really hard to break someone who has a little bit of everything in TVT. So I think Flash is just kind of setting himself up uh, for, uh, you know, maybe a timing attack off of two bases. But definitely not going to move out too, too early here and risk his army. No, I don't think so. No, he really shouldn't be doing that at any point. He knows he has an economic lead. Obviously, Byung has managed to, to kind of catch up on that. But... Honestly, Flash has been mining for longer. He's got a good infrastructure at home. He knows there's still the possibility that a Banshee will sneak in at some point, so he's being very active with his patrols here with this Viking-Raven combo. Yeah, you know, that's uh, it's a good thing to do if he can just stop any losses to those Banshees. It is a very expensive tech route to go. Uh, and, of course, the Counter Cloak is something that we've seen since the beginning, really, of StarCraft Two. Your opponent goes Cloak Banshee. Hey, why not Cloak Banshee in return? Well, that Marine, as much as he might rest in pieces or rip in pepperonis, as you might like to say, he did see the army coming across the map, which gives Flash a bit of a warning. He's got a bunch of tanks unseaged here. Now he'll siege them since he's got his Marine wall up. In the meantime, though, a Blue Flame Hellion drop from Beyong hits the main mineral line and kills about eight workers. Obviously denies a bunch of mining. Flash coming back here. He might even have to try and drop an auto turret, but no, he's going to have to pull back. Unfortunately, no opportunity for Beyond to actually counterattack by the looks of it. Hmm. And you know what? During all of this harassment, Flash actually had a nine kill Banshee in the yep. natural of Beyond. So, I, I mean, did. this is this is pretty nice. It's really both of them going blow for blow. It's 38 SCVs at 37 after all of that. What? So, uh, kind, of, kind of a crazy game thus far. And they've really switched positions from the last time with Flash going for this bio tank play. Uh, with no third command center quite yet, whereas Byung, he's about to finish his third command and looks like he's going for mech. Yes, he is. And Flash has got an opportunity here to hit the composition before it gets to the point where it's too difficult to break. And also to try and keep Byung's Hellions on his side of the map. That is a nasty lineup, though. Can Byung get the shots that he needs? The answer right now, for the moment anyway, is no. But he is trying to engage regardless. 
Well, he needs to pick off these Marines as much as possible. It'll help his Banshee out yep. quite a bit. Definitely. And, uh, in fact, I think he is going to chase Flash away for now. Flash has decided this might be a little bit too cost and efficient to keep yeah, on Yeah, I don't going. like that. What he is doing, though, is auto turret harass on the main mineral line, which has driven all the SCVs away. It takes a long time to kill auto turrets with blue flame hellions, especially when only one's firing at a time. And in the meantime, wow, Beyond pulled back to deal with that, and Flash goes into the natural and sieges up. Oh my god, a huge move from Flash here. This is going to be really hard to break for Byung. Uh, does throw down some Seeker missiles, and will they hit? Yeah, it looks like they will. A nice split there, though, from Flash. Uh, when have you ever seen auto turrets bait out that many mm. units? I mean, it's crazy for the amount that Byung pulled back to deal with this, and he gave his natural up in the process. I was surprised to see that, but Flash turned around after realizing... Wow, you have all your Hellions there? Really? I think I can go for this. And he was <laughs> totally right. He absolutely can. Beyong is losing key tech structures in the process. The armory is going down. He killed even like seven supply depots. So Beyong is sitting here really supply capped right now. Going to have to spend his entire mineral bank to even create any more units. So yeah. he's got to be kicking himself for that overreaction to the auto turrets. Flash really playing him like a fiddle this game. But yes, hold is. on, we actually have a... Oh, a the hits! The second oh. hits! Those were big ones indeed. That's a lot of SCVs that went down there. And Beyong looking for the big counter plays. Didn't quite do enough damage though. He needs more of that. Well, you know, he got him back the same amount, both the 37 SCVs after yeah, that drop. Yeah. But, you know, having a natural versus not having a natural is much more important than that. That is true. What's the point of having three command centers when you have a third of a mineral line left to use them on? That's, that's not good. Mm -hmm. And this is a contain. If you've ever seen a contain, this is one right here. Five tanks. A bunch of Marines and Marauders behind it. They're pretty badly injured, though. So, I mean, if Flash gets collapsed very badly and this contain gets smashed very effectively, then Beyond certainly has an opportunity to push right back out again. Yeah, it's hard to imagine such a thing, but we do have another drop. A Hellbat Blue drop Hellbat. going into Flash's main. Nah, it doesn't really do that much, though. No, not a huge amount. He got a couple of shots off, got a couple of SCVs out of that, but it's it, unfortunately, Byung does not have infinite Hellbat drops. Like, he's got maybe infinite Hellbats, but not infinite Hellbat drops. Those medevacs are a precious resource right now when he's sitting on one base and only mining two gas. And, of course, you want to maintain your tank count to make sure that Flash doesn't overwhelm you. Well, uh, you know, yeah, I, I feel like he's pretty overwhelmed right now. What is the plan from Beyond here? He's just making a ton of Hellbats, some Siege Tanks, and, and Banshees. And yeah. that's going to be pretty hard to break, especially since Flash now has Medivacs over healing up uh, all these Marines at his contain. But he's starting to push the Siege Tanks back a little bit at least. Yeah, he, thankfully that Banshee was just out of range of the Missile Turret there. But what I'm more worried about is that streak of red across the map, man. The reinforcements, Medivacs are coming into play. More Marauders, more reinforcing tanks here as well. A nice stim up here from Flash to eliminate that key linchpin tank up to the top corner. That's rough. Every unit right now is so important for Beyond. He's down by a good 40 to 50 supply and... Ugh... This is, I think that when he tries to break out of here, he's just not going to be cost efficient enough. And he's probably going to have to GG because not only does he have to break here, but then he has to kill another army as big as his army because Flash yeah. has so many more units at the moment. He really, really does. And I just, in a mirror, how, how? Like you would have to do so much damage and Flash is already even aware of this drop. As it comes out of the base, he says, No, you're not leaving. Absolutely not. You are not going anywhere. I'm going to starve you. This is a good old-fashioned siege. Well, it looks like he's trying to take this as his third base. His natural okay. now is his third base, which is kind of funny. You never really see moves like this, but I can't see this really ending well, right? That's way too much surface area for him to actually guard, especially when all of his units are in the main base. Yeah, I think so, because if he does line up, and you really can't get a great lineup at the best of times, the tanks only kind of barely reach just beyond the orbital there, then you leave your natural exposed, and you've got to hold that, because otherwise all these units down here just roll right up the main ramp, and then that's mm. GG game over. Well, right now with him kind of hemming and hawing on this ferrying, uh, 
Flash, well, hold on, here we go. He's decided that he's just gonna go for it. I don't know if he's gonna be able to break through though. Well, he did tank quite a lot there. The PDDs go down, the tanks are now in position here for Byung. Flash brings in reinforcements though, and he's gonna try and collapse on top of the tanks from the north. He gets one, he gets two, three down as well, and that's not happening, GG. Flash goes up three games to one in yet another fantastic performance. Indeed, Flash is playing so well, showing that he doesn't have to go mech. He can play the bio tank style as well, setting up that great contain and Beyond just never able to recover. Just, just beautiful. I, mm -hmm. My Terran heart does a flutter after watching this series so <laughs> far. And, I mean, this is on the way to being a 4-1, which makes it sound, honestly, a lot, a lot less close than it really is. I mean, it is, yeah, it is actually it, really, really close. I think I, that game wasn't, but everything else no. has been... Oh. It, yeah, it has been. Like, these have, have been really down and dirty. Both players really fighting for, for every inch in every game. Yeah. Uh, definitely the most one-sided game so far. Yeah. And even though, like, for instance, Flash could win this and end the series, a 4-1, like, sounds just wrong for, for how close these two players have been. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, it's uh, Byung has been playing out of his mind as well. Just Flash has been slightly, slightly better, except in that last game where just things kind of went horribly wrong. And really, does it all come back to the failure to get damage done early on? I think it, surely it has to. I mean, Flash basically got mm -hmm. away with Command Center first. Yeah, he really didn't do much at all. Uh, he tried his best. He did some pretty good harassment.